Best Podcast Ever is sponsored by the Gertzberg Law Firm, a full-service business law firm in Cleveland and Chagrin Falls that's changing the way businesses retain their attorneys. Go to GertzbergLaw.com to learn more. While you're there, check out Cover My Six, a complete legal audit of the six areas that most often create or prevent business lawsuits and government investigations. Go to CoverMySix.com to learn how we keep you safe. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to listen to the best podcast ever recorded. I really felt that this was a way that I could bring positive things to where I live. Hi, Molly Gebler. Hi, Alex Gertzberg. How are you? My gosh, I forgot what you looked like. I know, which is good, because no, it ain't pretty over no, here. No, no, it has been forever. Forever. I've missed you, too. I, yeah. I didn't say I missed you, <laughs> but <laughs> of How course I missed How you. How dare you? Oh, you're my bestie. Uh, of course I, I miss you. How long do you think it's been since we wrapped? Two uh, weeks. Two weeks? Right? Because we, we had a podcast and you were going away. Maybe. I've done a lot of traveling yes, in that time. Yes, you were yeah. going to the fish. I did. Yes. Do you want to hear what happened? Yes. So this fish festival that I was going to, so annually my, my college friends and I get together and rent an RV and go to a fish festival, right? And this year, um, and we've been to hundreds of shows, they canceled <gasps> the day before the festival because of a boil alert in Watkins Glen, New York. And th- there were like 20,000 fish fans descending on upstate New York at the time that this happened. And um, we happened to be in an RV outside of Lake Chautauqua when uh, Sarah Rader, our, our, uh, one of our, our people, um, starts reading off of her Twitter feed. And she's like, the festival just got canceled. And we're like, no, it didn't. Not Sarah. I said, yeah. when fish says it, then I'll believe it. And fish didn't say anything. And until like a half hour later and then fish said something about it and yeah it got canceled they t- had to turn everybody away wow it was a big deal it was a giant so you yeah. buy tickets to this yes so you get a refund okay so we camped at lake chautauqua that night and then we came back and went to nelson's ledges you ever been to nelson's ledges <laughs> have i been <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're really oh, oh memory. Were there a lot of firsts there, Molly? Like the corners <laughs> of my <laughs> um, uh, wow. Did you do a lot but of crazy? You, gotta, you have to remember again, I was a mom at twenty, so you know, there wasn't a lot of years of being crazy. <laughs> was but... uh was Sam conceived at Nelson's no, Ledges? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> But lots of fun at Nelson's Legends. So cool. Have you been there recently? I have not. So um, I, it's been a while for me, too. And um, more often than not, when I'm there, I can't remember afterwards having been there. Uh-huh. But got you. It's been, and it's been a few years. We So we ended up there and, and heard some music there. And I forgot I mean, how beautiful. I heard some music there. So it turned out that um, Leftover Salmon, which is a really great band, was playing there as well as... Um, playing there? I don't recall. Nelson's Ledges has a giant stage there now. Oh, my god! And, yeah, they have music festivals all the time. Oh, okay. And then Infamous String Dusters. Have you ever heard of those dudes? Alex, have you met me? You'd like them. I doubt it. It's like bluegrass funk. You okay. dig it. You would dig it. Okay. There's more cool in you than I think you realize. Uh, there Molly. is cool in me, but no, that's I'm, I'm not saying cool, there's so. more cool in you. I see. I see. Anyway, so like, um, but my, here's my point. My point is that you forget how 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 beautiful Nelson's Ledges is, and that giant lake. I went cliff diving over there, oh and there was a lot of um, hiking that we did, um, or some of us did. And it is just uh, the camping. The campsites were really cool. So it's just a fun place to go. But I'm worried about the fish band members. Like what happened to them? It's really sad. Yeah. It's it's a real bummer. Um, There was, I mean, there were thousands. There were thousands of vendors, right? And by vendors, I mean like hippie kids that went there Mm. with, you know, three days worth of food to sell. Right. Right. And 
uh, shirts to sell and and other things that all I mean this was how they were gonna live for the next couple of months right. was off the money and for the couldn't th- you guys all get on your Twitters together <laughs> on the Twitter machine and say okay you know what let's go to Nelson's Ledges well that's what and, happened and so do you feel like you were with a lot of it was so Nelson's people? Ledges was expecting that weekend like maybe a couple hundred people there were thousands oh, of like boy. everybody there was a fish refugee yeah. from Watkins Glen that that's yeah it was funny. crazy it was it was jam-packed oh, well, what um, did fish did anyone tweet fish and say hey we're at Nelson's Ledges Come on um, down. No. Um, well, I don't know if they did, but right. Fish did not show up at Nelson's Ledges. Damn but that. if you want to read a really good, heartfelt letter from a band who, I mean, they were just heartbroken mm. that their festival, they take their festival super seriously. Right. They have art installations there and they have all these side gigs happening and they literally build a city from nowhere. And um, they planned the, they planned every festival for four or five months. Their would crew. you say like would it be equivalent to like a Woodstock? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. And um, read if you go, if you go to fish dot com, I'm sure it's there. The letter that Fish wrote. The reason it took an hour for Fish to make the announcement is because they, they were, were on the stage writing this letter to their fans. You want to cry reading it. I mean, they they are just so busted up over having to turn i'm now, sure it was their pr person but no no, no. It, it, no. They, they it's them for writing from the stage and the thing of it is when you l- later on as the story comes out more about what happened that day um fish did everything they could to make it happen including trucking in water from all over the place apparently there was a giant flood in that area and that created this boil alert and without any question, the state, either either the state of New York or the local health department just had no imagination and no willingness to work with fish to make this happen because they canceled the entire festival. They could have canceled like one day right. and said, let's see how much water you guys brought. Right, right. And, you know what I mean? And they were just not willing to, mm. to, to deal. Maybe they used it as an excuse to just cancel it. I think they were anti-hippie is what it was. Um. So in the podcast always gets brought up on a Facebook group, Mommy Swap, that I belong to. And it's not what Our you podcast? don't get excited. It's not what you're thinking. Um, it is just, it's the local, and we've talked about this, where you sell things, you know. So you're saying locally. the best podcast well, ever gets brought up? let me up? finish before Sorry. you get, my, my bad. before you put that award up on the on your <laughs> shelf. Um, so usually people say, hey, um, do you have any recommendations of a good podcast? I'm looking to listen. And then, of course, is that I right? chime in and I say, well, if you want to listen to local, you know, folks. Um, so our, our podcast was discussed and, and hopefully we got a couple really? listeners because the one girl said, oh, my gosh, done. And then she's like, I want to be on your podcast. And I'm like, well, you can be on our podcast. Well, hold on. For if, sure. she, if she passes our rigorous standards. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, not I just anyway. that. You can't just... I shared that with yeah. her. But I just thought that was kind of cool. That Interesting. Um, well, hello to all of the listeners Ashley. from Mommy hello, Swap. Ashley. Um, come on, and all the mommy yeah. swap listeners. That, Good job, uh, mommy swap. Yeah. spreading the gospel. It's actually super mommy swap, but so, right. do, what do they kick daddies off of the mommy swap page? Daddies what? aren't allowed to be <gasps> on the mommy swap. Well, that's they'll da- have to start a daddy swap. That's daddiest. <laughs> they'll have to start a daddy swap, which I was thinking that they they really should because I bet you you guys could sell not to be. Um, sexist but, but i'm gonna be anyway but you could sell your tools in your garage <laughs> and and your you know your tool stuff you could start your own why don't you start it you could be the administrator well so number one i would be the anti-daddy because i don't know how to <laughs> you use don't have tools, any tools? <laughs> well we have tons of tools so i could actually start the group yeah you all would be, by all by myself you'd be more of a daddy in that sense than i would um, so what else is going on? I saw Hamilton this weekend. Oh yeah. With young Jacob. It was awesome. Of yeah. course. You saw it recently. I, I, I did not see it. Oh, I thought you did. No, that's why I, I was had telling no you. desire to see it. Remember we talked, we had this conversation. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. people got all political in it. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't like rap. 
Um, well, okay. yeah, My, sorry, for some folks. reason, I thought you saw it. Sorry, folks. Uh, the phone number is <laughs> for all those who would like to complain. Um, I'm going to New York City. Um, Again. Yes, Emily has been asked to work the fashion show Ooh. for Christian. Um, so that's just an opportunity that she can't. Um, and I've been needing to get out of here. Why? My, you know what I just do? You've been stressed out, Molly. I'm not. I just need to. I just need to leave and have Why? some Molly. Let's, time. let's drill down on this. <laughs> what, what's happening here? Talk, no, talk to me, Molly. No, all good. All good things. I just, you know, there's time and this is a good time at the chamber because there's okay. a, you know there's planning going on but this is a good time to to get out for a little bit and just decompress okay. and right. have you know i mean i have no couches still my house is still very much in disarray and you know i just leave it all and just go so this was a great opportunity i wasn't gonna go but um so I'm you're going to go to New York City New and York you're going to hang out with your daughter. Are you going to um, stay in Manhattan? Yes. Yeah, we're going to stay in Manhattan. We're just It's a Thursday to Sunday type of thing. We'll okay. drive out there and driving, um, driving I'm in New excited York. about that. All right. We painted the house. You did? Yeah, because I Man. didn't like the color John painted last year. The whole, like the inside or the outside? John painted the whole outside. Why are you making him work so hard on your house? I, I don't You're like, re, why don't you just... He, Start over, build a new house. Oh gosh, You've done so I much to that, that dude. I would love that. No. I said the next time it's a condo where people do it for you, yeah. for sure. I'm done. I'm so done. I just want to sit and have a glass of wine with my friends, right? And you know, so. Um, well, good luck with that. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> with the house and with the New York trip. Um. Well, here, I mean... Oh, so twin update. Twin update. <laughs> Molly, you are positively glowing. Oh, thank Just. you, thank you. I am not having twin folks. folks None that somebody, we know of. No, it would be kind of impossible. <laughs> um, if... Um, uh, I guess it wouldn't be, but it would be disastrous. Never I say think. never. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be good because I have my <laughs> tubes tied. So um, that'd be fascinating. Yeah, um, but yeah, so um, she's doing well. For good. those of you, my daughter's having twins. Molly's um, gonna be a grandma. It's very scary though because you know, like I just I need a couple more ultrasounds with some solid heartbeats to breathe. You know, I mean, it's just it's scary. Twins are. Those early months are, mm. you know, fragile. Um, but she's starting, she's having trouble eating. Uh, but she goes Wednesday, we'll have another ultrasound and another picture of when my baby. Do you mean she's throwing up? No, she just isn't, she just can't eat. No appetite. She, yeah. So she's lost about 25 pounds. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that obviously will be a conversation with, but if you do research, that That's is normal. common. It is common. So, but her, Belly started getting hard today. She called. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. That, yeah. that means there's something growing in there. Mm -hmm. Nice mm -hmm. job, Sam. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's exciting. That is exciting. That's exciting. Uh, and the kids started school. Everybody is back. It's is true. everyone out? Is every? Is did Maya? Maya's in daycare. Okay. Uh, Ethan and Jacob are back to school. Uh, seventh, yeah, seventh and eighth. Yeah. When so. will Maya start kindergarten? Next year. Oh, preschool. She's in pre-K right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of daycares and, and the, the former owner of um, Goddard School for uh, Shagrin Falls, Jim uh, Nerponi, passed away, which is a, oh, that's too bad. a past president of the chamber and an amazing, amazing man um, died a couple mm. days ago. So really? prayers Natural to causes? his family. No, he had cancer. Oh, he that's too He had cancer, bad. and it was very fast and quick and... Um, and young. I mean, he was seventy. So, um, uh, so prayers to, to his Jim's family. family. Yeah. Um, Kathy's a big um, realtor here in in sh around the yeah, area. Yeah, I see her name everywhere. Yeah, Kathy so, Marpuni. Yeah. The prayers to them, and yeah, it's never a never a good way to start uh, the week. So, so yeah, so we have a great guest today. Yeah, but before we oh before, before we, yeah. okay, what do you got? So so last week. I did 
an interview with Gary Clavin. Without me, everybody. Without you. So it's so probably it's, not going to be good. It's going to be half as good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if uh, that. But, but so you'll be listening to this, folks, after I taped it, but before that one comes out. And what I'm going to tell you, you got to listen to it. Okay. It, that, that guy is a real inspiration. And this wildly successful business person who decided to give of his own time to coach other business people. And he's my coach mm -hmm. at Strategic Coach. So he, he's in that Chicago um, uh, course that I go to. It's not a course. It's a, He's in Chicago when I go there four times a year and he, he talks to my group. And he's amazing. And if you're a business owner or thinking about being a business owner, you definitely want to listen to the Gary Clavin episode. Um, that guy is, I mean, every word that came out of his mouth, I just wanted to write it down, except, you know, it was being recorded, so right, I knew it was so. going to be there. But, yeah, he's a, he's a real great coach, and he, he knows, he's got this talent for breaking complex things down into simplified um, architectures, right? Um, he knows how to cut through a lot of the noise to get to the essence of what you're trying to accomplish. And I've talked to a lot of business coaches and we had one, um, uh, Diane Helbig was on here, right? She's mm -hmm. a great coach too. Uh, Gary Clavin is a real um, world-class guy, real high level guy. And so uh, trust me folks, uh, when you're listening to this, you're going to want to subscribe to our podcast so that you're going you to want to listen to all our. I mean, no, let's I know, be honest. But, but you're going to want to know when that one comes out because you will not want to miss that. It's okay. really, really great. Mark Re the calendars yeah, down. Clavin. Mark the calendars down, Anywho. folks. And you and I need to discuss because we're going to Columbus in November. We are. And we need to talk about that. Yeah. Um, because we're going for the essay contest. Yeah. So that's exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. We are, uh, we, uh, as you know, Molly, are yes. going to be um, spreading the gospel of the We Solve Problems essay contest to the masses. Yes. So it, there will be a, the annual convention of the Ohio School Boards Association. They have this, this annual thing in Columbus. Uh, where all of the school boards from all over the state gather along with the superintendents from their school districts. So I think we're talking about thousands of people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they have these breakout sessions and they have keynote speakers and they asked us to talk in one of the breakout sessions about how to get schools and businesses and local communities connected to each other for um, different purposes and in our case it was for an essay contest that really I think broke through a lot of conventional barriers I, I, I would say Molly do you think this is true do you think it would be a stretch to say that what we did was truly a one-of-a-kind endeavor that had absolutely. never been done before absolutely yeah yeah for sure yeah. so we're going to talk to the the school board association and hope to spread it to different communities yeah. and have them then yeah get involved yeah I'm really proud of us I'm proud of you I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thanks, man. Okay, so we can yes. look forward to that. So, Christy George, Christy the name alone, George. let's be honest. I love that name. You know what it is? It, it It's like a professional athlete's name. Yeah. She should yeah. be a an Olympic volleyball player. Okay. She's a, a, a fashion diva. Okay. I don't know what true? she's wearing right now, but every she time. She very well dressed. Just yeah, now. she's to the top. Interesting. To the top. Lots of leopard print. She likes leopards. Leopard print. Who doesn't? One. Right? Oh, my goodness. My microphone is attacking me. Um, yeah. So she yeah. has a publication, a company, era, which I, I must say, I must admit, I must divulge to our listeners. Full disclosure. Full disclosure that I was on the cover of the magazine. That was a great article that, that, that they wrote about you. That was fun. That, you know good. what? It was fun. The, the picture that they ended up choosing was myself taking a selfie of my family right and if anyone knows me or follows me on facebook selfies are not selfies of myself but selfies with people and things are uh it's my trademark it's my brand i'd agree with that 
Um, all right. It's Christy yeah, I'm George. super excited to talk yeah. to Christy. So she has a publication. It's family focused. It's neighborhood focused. Um, it's a great piece, and it's yeah. always super cool to get it um, and find out who's on the cover. Yeah, because it's usually your because we're both from the area. Um, it's usually somebody you know, or maybe someone you've seen in passing, and you got to maybe take a sneak peek into their world because there's always a nice article about. Yeah. Um, so I love that. I love it. I say we get her in here, Alex Gertzberg. What do you think? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's do it. I brought a potpourri of Ooh. different business owners. Um, obviously, that's the chagrin pet. Um, and right here is Would you Mr. say it's a Cruz. veritable cornucopia? It's, well, not exactly a cornucopia, <laughs> but close. All right. And then, but I do have. Let's take, let's take out that neighbors and let's put in mom. Oh, there okay. we go. Uh, right. We won't tell the, the the kids at home who just didn't make the cut. Right, right, right. right. And what I love about it is the catchy. Title is always so fun. Do you oh, do really? the title? It's, um, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. it's. Oh. oh, there it is. <laughs> Doing her have, Can we face. do a redo when the twins come? Oh my gosh, <laughs> we can. I have a, a proposal for you, folks. Actually, um, I, this is so cool what you do. And you I, gotta you gotta talk closer to the oh. microphone, or it's not gonna pick you up, okay. Christy. I'm sorry. No, well, sorry. let her let her yeah. put my don't interrupt her no. while she's putting sorry. my my bad. Stuff. And my bad. Some serious stuff uh, my here. Apologies. There it is. I'm gonna put this right up front. Alex, why don't you hold it? All right. <laughs> that's what he said. Well, <laughs> See, now that's when it's <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have put it inside. Maybe we should open it up and show the. Mm. cool photographs that we well, have. Well, I think that if the folks go to the best podcast ever.com and click on this episode, which is probably how they're listening to it anyway, they'll see uh, the um, article about Molly there yes, that you we will post it. wrote, and they'll see all the pictures from here that we want them to see. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Right, right, right. The nudes are going to have to stay out of this one. Well, yeah, yeah we yeah. don't want to. But, but, but the the neighborhood loved it. <laughs> Ooh, have you thought, Christy, about a centerfold in these? Because that would be pretty... Can it be a firefighter? Oh. Can I pick them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can it it be? could be one of those firefighters. <laughs> Um, so, Christy, great. welcome to the best podcast ever. Thank you. See, I, didn't so I fun. say she's so chic in her wardrobe? You oh, you oh. always are. Actually, I believe the words were fashion diva. I did say uh, that. Yeah. Fashion diva. Yeah. 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 Well, Congratulations. I, I don't want to um, <laughs> ruin any ideas, but you know, this is from the 80s. <laughs> See, I love that. Yes. And, and, and this is an original. You've had this all your life. Oh, yeah. Well, see, not all my life from the 80s. Right, I go right, back right. further. Well, you <laughs> see, now that is my tip for the young folk is stop getting rid of your stuff. Oh, Put yeah. it in your closet and keep it because it's coming back. And I believe our conversation with Emily sh said that That's exact true. thing. It comes back. Right. So, so the publication is Neighbors. Yes. It covers this particular... Neighbors covers Chagrin Falls, Bainbridge, and Bentleyville. Are there other neighbors? Yes, out there. Uh, uh, well, it also covers South Russell. I don't want to leave them out, but it, the point is, we it got so got darn big out. that I I just I couldn't put everybody's name on it. Uh -huh. so the Coons are a little bit not happy oh, with me because man. they think South Russell should be on the front cover. Gotcha. But, well, so, some would argue that when you say Chagrin Falls. That med include South Russell? Yeah. yeah, but Bainbridge people would argue that as well. But well, and Bainbridge people, well, but Bainbridge is listed. But we're the four is... for O two two, right? The the way that I went about um, looking at the demographic was four four O two two four four O two three. Uh huh. Okay. And then o over the past couple of years, I have added homes to the magazine gotcha. as as I could. Be because it, it costs money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. End of story. And yeah. 
So that so is two two is also Moreland Hills and yes. it's it's uh, Bentleyville, it's right. Sugar and Falls. So you just kind of kept growing as you could. Uh, yes, and I do have um, there's there's rhyme behind this reason um, or reason behind the rhyme. And that is, you don't want it to get too big. When it does, it starts to lose its effect of the open mm. power of the magazine because then it, it loses that neighborhood feel. What is the mission of it? The, the mission of the magazine is, it's kind of threefold. It is all about the area. So the content of the magazine is about businesses in the area, um, nonprofits, local growers, anything that is of interest to this particular, think of it in a um, 5,000 person radius or at best case scenario, five mile radius Mm -hmm. of where we live. Mm -hmm. Uh, So um, the, the tripod that I like to think about is it is about the area, the, and it is all about the people that live in the area, which is why I have a family on the front cover every month without fail. Mm-hmm. That is why people open it up and look inside. Mm-hmm. And then it, it is c- totally supported by the business in the area. So all the advertisers that are in the magazine um, support the magazine. Th- this goes directly to homes at no charge. It is mailed to homes. Christy, how, how long has the magazine been around? The, my first issue came out um, August of 2016. Okay. So before August 2016, what's happening that you're sitting around saying, you know, I think I'm going to start a magazine? That's a good question. I, I was at home writing a book. Yeah? And has it been published? It has not been published. It's on the shelf right now. Okay. Um, I, I didn't finish it, but it will be finished. Um, and the reason that it is not finished is because I was taking a really, really long time to write it. And I said to my husband, so how much time do you think I have left on this book? And he said, mm, time's up. <laughs> so... I started to look at what can I, what could I do? I spent 30 years in, in the chemical industry. Um, and, I, and I didn't want to go back to manufacturing. And I have a history. My, my early career was in publishing, writing. Um, so I, had a, a, I started out as a young girl in the chemical industry doing that. Long story short, he said, time's up. I said, okay, what can I do? And these folks... Um, at Best Version Media, which is a company out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, saw my background and history, um, thought that I would be good at doing something like this. And so I started investigating them. They contacted me. Um, We started investigating each other. And I thought, oh, this looks like fun. And it was the first time that I really had the opportunity to do something for the area in which I lived. Are you allowed to talk about what the book uh, is about? I could. What was the book about? It it is. The book is about. Sorry. What is um, the book about? The book is about uh, single parenting a special needs child. Hmm. Wow. So that is what yeah. the book is about. And is it nonfiction or fiction? It is nonfiction. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. That's, that's, that's useful is what that it, is. It would be if yeah. I would finish it. <laughs> it would be really what, useful. Uh, what do you think is uh, or was or is preventing you from finishing that book? Uh, I'm busy. Mm-hmm. I'm a very busy girl. Or publishing out a whole magazine. Well, Right. Do you have a problem yeah. finishing things? Because I do. I have a problem starting things. And Alex has a book. It, yeah, my I, I've been working on a book for like seven years. Well, I don't feel so bad now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but I'm a very low standard against which to compare. <laughs> I think I must be too. <laughs> <laughs> do you, in general, have trouble finishing things? Because I do. I definitely need people it's around not what me. I heard. <laughs> 
the most <laughs> ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Molly, you're in rare form I today. Am. Are you okay? I, I think it's uh, like that a is slap vodka at in me. there, isn't it? I know. <laughs> no I know vodka. it is. No. Uh, I if need... it were, it'd be flow vodka. We all know that, right? Our new chamber member. Yes. Um, I need to surround myself with people who will finish things that I start. Mm. Oh. Um, well, we all do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, but but so, uh, are you close to the end of that book? Is there still a lot? No. There? Okay. There's still a lot to go. I I have my beginning, I and I have my ending. So I know when I want the book to finish, but it's a pretty long story. Although it's funny. It's not um it, it certainly has some tear jerking aspects to it and it's a very deep book, but and it's very serious, but it's told through humor. So there are people that you can talk to that will finish your book for you. I don't know if you'd ever want that. We have a ghostwriter that just joined the chamber. Yeah, there's well, there, there's any number of She's ways incredible. to get your book published without, if you, I mean, if it's the kind of thing where it's a labor of love and you definitely want to do it yourself, then this wouldn't work for you. But there's, this is a common thing, right? Where people have the skeleton of their book or people start their book and can't right. finish it. And yeah, I mean, there's lots of people looking for I'm work out there. I'm going to send you her information. I would love that. Yeah. Uh, I want to read your book. It's pretty funny. Okay. And what made you do that topic? Personal experience. Okay. Okay. I lived right. that. Okay. I want to read it. Yeah, um, so, awesome. okay. So your husband says, time's up. You've been working on this too long. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what, did he say, you have to find something to do because you're driving me crazy? Mm-hmm. Or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you said, I'm going to start a magazine. Yeah. Um, as I said, these folks found my information on the internet. I had some a resume out there, a, a lot of places out there. And um, as I said, I had, I had a background in writing. I certainly had a background in sales. Um, and so I was a great candidate for starting something like this. And when you start a, a magazine, you start from scratch, from zero, from nothing. And I wanted to do something in my hometown where I could get very involved with where I live because I had never had that opportunity before. So that, well, that was a driving factor. I knew I could do this. Yeah. But... I really felt that this was a way that I could bring positive things to where I live. And and I'm very pleased at the result. Yeah. It's, and, been, it's a great magazine. And do you um, go out and get the co- – I mean, it's been out now for over a year. Do you find that people are knocking on the door to get on the cover or do you put maybe a little bit of both? In, yeah, I would say it's a little bit of both. If people want to, um, if people see it and they love it, I'll, I can get a call. Here's a perfect example. I had, um, I had an email from someone over in Lake Lucerne who said, I have a cover girl for you. And then sent me photographs of Petula, the the oh yes, famous. Petula Petula is very famous. Yes, not to mention my dogs are very famous. But where is she? Um, So uh, here, I was, and it was interesting that um, Adam is not on the cover with her. That is correct, and Adam is still mad at me because of Uh-oh, that. Oh, I didn't mean to bring it up. But, Although, I mean, obviously, Petula is is. Um, I say that the, kidding. Petula me. lives in your development, FYI. So we're looking Famous. at the May 2018 issue of Neighbors, folks, and on the cover is this very cute little dog being Pomeranian. held. Pomeranian. It's just a stuffed Being animal. held by I mean, does, Marie, like... who appears to be hospitalized for something. That is correct. Uh, and um, this, this is, yeah. Th- this little dog, the reason why 
that photograph is is there. She is one of the most popular therapy dogs at university hospitals. And so that particular shoot, we went with her and visited a variety of cancer patients at university hospitals. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely lovely. And that photograph just so typified, exemplified what happens when this little girl goes into a room with kids that are very, very ill. Yeah. Um, Hmm. and, And so it just, it, told the story Mm -hmm. now i must admit that there are now look at that picture okay so page six it's petula being hugged by her daddy yes dad oh that is very cute yeah but um so i get calls um if people see the magazine they'll ask how do people get on the magazine if i am calling on a client i know that they live in the area that is a great way for me to put somebody on the front cover if they're in the magazine as an advertiser mm-hmm. and they have a family or like they're unique. Mike Henry, for instance, Mike you're Henry. that. I know he advertises in it. Right. He, he writes some articles about it. Um, you know, he, he, he does some expert He's an expert on it. contributor mm-hmm. for me. Um, his family couldn't be more perfect. Mm-hmm. To be on the front cover, and I had to fight tooth and nail. I'm sure to he's get a, them to yes. be on the cover. Yes, they're very low profile. But he works it in the community. He plays in the community. He raises his family in the community. I mean, yeah. that's exactly what your what your magazine's all about. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, I I am absolutely in love with what I do. I love it. It shows. It it definitely shows. I think it is some. It's something that the community, at least this is what I'm. I feel, and they have expressed mm-hmm. that it. They feel it's theirs. I have people that I don't know that I'll show them the magazine, and their response is, "Oh, that's my magazine." I yeah. love that. Um, yeah, I get that. What what I love about this whole story so far is that you um, took your love of writing and applied it to something that um, allowed you to do it on a regular basis and continue it and get published. Um, so I think about that a lot because um, I, for the life of me, could not get through my own book, but I really like writing articles. And so there's all kinds of stuff that I write for different magazines about the practice of law and, and about running a business. And I get that same joy when I'm doing that and finishing it. And then it, it gets published, it gets put in print, and, and you're like, oh, it's a finished product. And sometimes I think that um, it's okay to just, I mean, maybe this book will never get, in my case anyway, maybe the book will never get finished. But what's important is that I'm experiencing the joy of writing, and which is which is why I started writing that thing in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I understand so that. You're, are you finding that to like? Is it tapping into that same place? Oh, absolutely. You get a lot of joy writing for your magazine and and publishing each one as you did when you were writing your book. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's huge. And, and it's it's all personal, actually. Yeah. If um, I do have a content coordinator. We switch off. But yesterday, for instance, I did the interview with the family. And um, so I, if I do the interview, then I do the writing. And it becomes very personal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, here's here's why you finish. Because of deadlines. Right. <laughs> which, which is a yeah. great point. I mean, you, that... We didn't have a deadline for our right. book till our husband said it's time, yeah. right? Right. But no, that's I mean that's a great external force that gets stuff done. So if it works, it works, right? Right. So yeah. let's but, go. When you said, excuse me, when you said starting from scratch, that had to bring a lot of obstacles. Yes, it did. So give us like a, a big obstacle that you you know w- was the magazine ever on the verge of maybe saying I, I'm, I can't do this I, I no but you have to get I mean you had to get advertisers to bring money into this to and then go you know the articles are the easy part it was it's the the selling of it yeah 
So no tell question. us a little bit about some of those obstacles that you had to overcome. Well, I didn't have this to show. Mm-hmm. I, I, you are selling a non-entity. So that's, that's difficult. Right. Um, when you're selling your law practice, you're selling a non-entity. You, you, you're well, selling your legal services. You right. Know, right. But, it's not so tangible. What, what, yes, yeah, a non-tangible. Yeah. And I had nothing to show mm-hmm. except others right. that weren't from this area. And, and so the sales job became, this is going to be a publication about us, about this area. Because the first question they ask you, the advertisers, is what's the circulation? Right. right. And so before it gets started, the answer is zero. And that's not <laughs> there something. There is no circulation. Right. right. So, so that made it difficult, I'm sure. Yes. I, I mean, the answer outside of that was, I will start out with 3,000, and I could describe that. Mm-hmm. And now um, my circulation is 4,400 okay. w- within this area. Who's the first business that gave you a chance and said, you know what? I'm in. I believe in you. Emile Soriel. Oh, a kitchen and bath. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And He's followed, a great guy. he is a great guy, followed very closely by this Michael. young man. Yeah. Michael Henry. Former yes. podcast guest. Yes, he was. Was yes, he? he was. You're yes. going to listen to that episode. That's a yeah, tearjerker. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Well, yeah, that's great. So it was, um, it was a year, not, not quite a year. I started in September of 2015. And then about June of 2016, I was told we're going to, we're going to publish. And so it came out, takes about six weeks, the first one. And and then you're on a roll. Now you're running. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been a a sprint. Oh, wow. It hasn't (laughs) stopped yet. Mm. No, it hasn't stopped. Well, well, let's, let's take that back to Molly's question. So walk us through the journey in terms of obstacles, difficulties that you've had to break through to get from that day to this day. Well, one of the, this magazine is all about branding. So it's, it's not a magazine of Um, discounts and anything that you would get at your house, for instance, in a direct mail format. Mm -hmm. So when you come into the magazine, um, you're, people may expect that their, their phones are going to start ringing. That's, that's not how any branding works at all. It keeps your face in the community. It keeps people knowing who you are. So um, that that's a big obstacle. If if folks don't quite understand all the nuances of advertising and and the the different reasons for it, mm-hmm. um, two months after they're in your magazine, you could be getting phone calls saying nothing. This doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it does work. And people are seeing you every day. The the one thing that that is hard for people to understand, but is a big reality, is they um, are being, I can make sure that they're seen because I know the readership of this. Mm -hmm. So they may not be getting called, but they're they're seeing that, oh, I know that Mike Henry works in the area. I I see his face all the time. I read his articles. And it's showing that whoever your advertisers are, are being shown as being supportive to their community, which is a huge, mm. you know, when when I may not need a, a agent right now, but I guarantee that when I do, uh, it's going to be these constant reminders that will play in my head when I go to choose Absolutely. somebody. Well, and there's a related concept there too, um, which is that there's some science behind the statistic, but it's something like it takes seven interactions uh, between a seller and a buyer before the buyer really th- even thinks about buying from the right. seller. And so you, what you're doing is you're providing one of those interactions, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, the, the related question for you, though, is social media, right? You've right. got 
print. Is this? Do you also have an electronic version of this? I I don't. Okay. I put it on my Facebook okay. every so often, but there's a reason behind that. Um, these are private magazines, so there's an area in the magazine that is. Um, it's a classified area mm-hmm. that is at no charge to the recipients of the magazine. You're trying to keep it local on purpose. In other I words. do want to keep it yeah. local. We're not trying to reach the masses yeah. throughout the United States. That's not going to do any good to the advertiser who's targeting yeah. this mm-hmm. area. So, so, um, so my question, which I, I think I have an answer to, but I'd love to to get your thoughts on it is when an advertiser says, why would I worry? Why would I pay for print when I can do it for free on social media? What do you think the answer is? There's no control over that. There's no control over social media. And, and I would never want anyone to think that I think this is the only way you you have to have a a mixture and a package of different types of advertising. However, um, you you don't know why something someone was triggered to go to their computer and look something up. Right. You'll you'll never be able to prove that. Yeah. And I don't care what kind of services you're getting online from X company that says that they can measure that. Yeah. Because it could have been that they receive this magazine, right. they see the ad in here, they go to their computer, they look it up, yeah. and that's what triggers the call. Well, and, and I so so, I actually like that answer better than what my answer was going to be. But my I think there's a there's another aspect to it, which is that um, people still read print, people still open. There there's something about turning the pages and browsing through one page at a time a publication of any kind, which is why newspapers haven't gone out of business. But I think that there is, so you you said you do use social media yourself, right? You put- I do. Yeah, and, there, and so the reason I think that you, I'm guessing that you find value in that is because you're attacking it from both sides, right? I think, I think you kind of have to, right? Oh, I agree. Um, I, I completely agree that there, there needs to be a mixture of things. I do too. Um, but on the other hand, there's, um, I, I believe that if someone is seeing you in the area in which you're, you're living, someone's seeing your business over and over again, they're going to make concerted effort to at, if if not look up a couple others, they will look you up. Yeah. Um, and I am a proponent of two or three of the same businesses in my magazine because this is interesting. And I'd like to go back to that comment you made about, about print. Yeah. But instead of going to the computer to look up five or six in X category, roofers, they'll pull them out of the magazine because they're close, they know them, they've read about yeah. them, and they feel comfortable with them. B- back to your comment quickly on the um, the print media. People, this, is, um, this has come out over the past couple of years. Statics, t- statistics will prove this out over and over again. People learn from print. They don't learn from going to the computer and reading quickie articles about things. But when they, when they want to read about knees mm-hmm. and knee replacement, they are going to look at this and read this article. When they want to read about a, a person that is an expert in roofing, they're, they're going to go to the roofing expert in here and say, oh, boy, this guy really knows what he's talking about. In general, that isn't what happens when you're, when you're browsing 10 or 12 different companies online. And so there's an inherent need to learn with a magazine and there's that other factor of having it in your hands mm-hmm. yeah and keeping it in your hands Feeling as long it, as you yeah. want it in your hands yeah that's even better than tv 
a TV advertisement goes off the yeah. air. Or yeah. you may miss that phone number. But this is coffee table stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. People go back to these things four to five times a month. And then the next one comes out. Right. It's exci- I mean, so uh, coming from a marketing world and a writing, that was exciting to me. Right. I right. loved that. I thought, well, I could do good things. And, and have you succeeded? I mean, I know the answer to this, but um, have you succeeded in, in doing good things? Have you? Because I, I Is would, the proof in the pudding? Yeah, I, I know the answer, but it doesn't matter to me. Does it matter? Like, do you feel you've accomplished it? And is there have there been times that you've had to adjust in maybe what you wanted your mission to be to continue the mission, if that makes sense? Maybe an advertiser that maybe is not local that you needed to bring in because you need those dollars or, you know, whatever. Well, first of all, it's my job to get people to understand what this magazine does. I I can't be false about this is going to bring a, a million dollars of new business into your business. It will give you exposure into this target if this is your target market. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to someone in Beechwood and they have a desire to target this area, then we should be talking. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to grow their business within this area or build on some of the dollars that could be had in this this community, then then they don't need me. And, and so that's why we sit down and talk. Um, but it really is my job to get people to understand what does this magazine do. You could come into this magazine. I cannot guarantee you that you're going to get X amount of calls within X amount of time. But I will guarantee with uh, my readership, I know this sounds crazy, it is extremely high. If it is not hedging towards... Uh, at least 100% of whomever receives it at their home, somebody it in up. that in that home is going to open this and read it. They can't help themselves. Well, mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's a tough Agreed. it's a tough way, um, like explaining to to an advertiser what their ROI, their return on investment, yes, is going to be. It's really hard in any medium, right? T- TV advertising, online advertising. It's I, it's something that I I struggle with as a business owner, and that I know. I remember when I was in-house counsel for a telecom company, their advertising spend was enormous. And I remember we would be at board meetings where the marketing person had to justify why they spent so much on, on something. And it was an impossible conversation to have. You right. know, you're, you're really what you're doing is you are banking on imprints, on a certain number of eyes seeing your right. name and your face, but you can't quantify it, really. You can't prove that a certain number is actually going to see it, much less that a certain number is going to see it and then buy from you. So it's really, I think, based on circulation to some extent and on the quality of the publication, which yours is exceptional. It's really good stuff in there. And if I'm... Um, if I'm thinking about where I'm going to put my dollars, that that's what I'm looking at. How how many people are receiving it, and how right. the way you figure out how likely it is that they're going to read it is well, how good's the magazine? You know, how good's the stuff? I, I, I love hearing you say that. Um, surveys. I'd get the contract out right now, Christy. <laughs> are you ready for, for him? I'd get it out right now, man. I'd be putting it on that table so fast. <laughs> Um, I, I think you should get the contract out so I can draft it for you as a lawyer. I don't know if you had a lawyer look at your contract recently. I'll hook you up. I, I, be the I, bet, I bet you could hook me up. I'll hook you up. Um, and let me, I'll address that because I think this is really a good conversation. There are times that I'll sit down and talk with somebody and I'm not a good fit for right. their business. And that's okay too. Um, Recently, I know that you brought on a um, elder care mm-hmm. person, but prior to that, you you were pretty focused on um, the the business aspect of 
the Are lawyering you world. Yeah. Your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that's not necessarily the, the best world for my magazine. Because Did you hear that she doesn't want you. <laughs> it's I'm reverse psychology. Who really? want you, really? I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's reverse psychology. Yes, I, but the I point think you guys is, would be a great fit together. The the well, point there, is, we, I I would never even dream of that. And a long time ago, I thought he's not a very good fit for me. I thought that too. now I think he probably is. He mm-hmm. probably still mm-hmm. thinks that. <laughs> well, I got to be careful because I don't want him taking any money away from the chamber sponsorships that he does. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, there's enough of Alex to go around, ladies. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's so on. nice to Come hear. On. We don't have to fight. Oh, don't fight over. That's not me. what he she said. <laughs> Holly's in rare form today, I Christy. Am, folks. I oh, am. my goodness. Get the kids out of the room. Here she goes. It's, it's getting real <laughs> up in here. Well, um, this is a, a little off of Neighbors Magazine, but then a little bit on Neighbors Magazine. I thought it was so cool that I was able to do this. And what I would like to do is an article on the best podcast ever. Wow. And, um, breaking news here, folks. Y- it is breaking news. It is. It's a scoop. Uh, it, however, I would need my photographer to come in during another best podcast mm. ever. I don't mind using my... I thought we might have a third person we could take well, some photographs. But yeah, I, I think that would be really fun exposure to do. You're doing something for the community and for the businesses in the community, and I love that. And that is what this is all about. Yeah, That's what my magazine is. So I would like to do an article about the best podcast ever. Alex, what do you think? I think that's a fantastic idea. I think we're in. It's my way yeah. of giving back to you oh, folks goodness. for allowing me to come on. Oh well, my gosh, here's, that's our pleasure. Are you kidding me? Here's the thing about it, right? I'm immensely proud of this little gig that Molly and I have. This is episode 50-something, right? I mean, Molly and I have really, I think, honed our activity here right if you listen to the, some of the earlier stuff the guests are all phenomenal but molly and i didn't know what we were doing and we, we, had, cr- we had crappy equipment <laughs> right and not only that but when i think about i'm going now when i think about how much he loves bragging about me christy i, I can tell <laughs> listen there are over 50 amazing people that have sat in this room with molly and me and let us pick their brains about business ownership and about Broadway acting and and we've a one lot reason, are local though I would say oh yeah ninety but percent of my, our people are local. What I love about what we do is that we've taken fifty plus people's stories and and put it out there mm-hmm. for listeners all over the country. Mm-hmm. And I think didn't we find out that like people were listening in like Czechoslovakia or something yes, like that? We don't Romania? know why. Well, but know. hello Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm immensely proud of the fact that we've used this little forum to get people's stories out. Mm-hmm. We can learn about them, but thousands of people out there have learned about them, too. And that's pretty cool. So tell me, how, how has it come back? I mean, have people come back to you and said, oh, my gosh, so-and-so listened to my the we best don't care. pod? <laughs> so long as we're having fun. <laughs> okay. You know, I think the most, it all? It, the most impactful one, I think, was recent with Jim Maloney. I've mm, gotten yeah. a lot of people. Uh, the um, Fire chief. The oh, fire oh. team, the which de- I would like to chief. pass that on. I just wrote that to say to you because he is yeah, local. Yeah. He's the fire uh, inspector here in Chagrin, lives locally, and was bombed by a... Mm-hmm. Almost got killed in uh, Iraq by yeah, an IED. He's incredible. Incredible yeah. story. Oh, so, you mean for as, you. A, as yes. a family feature? Yes. Oh, I would love yes. that. He and yeah. his wife uh, and their dogs. And... Um, so I think he was the one that that like going out and, and people saying, oh, my gosh, I heard that. Yeah. Um, I think the senator had listened to it. Jim had mentioned that the senator listened to it on his ride home, which was super cool. Um, mm. So that was that one was the, like it finally like yeah. hit me like we're, you know, and then on you're Facebook, big time. Yeah, right. We hit yeah. the big time now. Well, we also, I think, got a lot of um, 
uh, judges for our essay contest mm -hmm. uh, because we talked about it a lot. Yes. Um, so I don't know how it's come back other than in those ways, but I know that it's given a lot to other people. I think that people have drawn inspiration from from our guests. We hope. And have learned a lot about running their businesses. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing that um, we've helped promote businesses of the people who have sat in your seat. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Speaking of that, if someone would like to uh, advertise in your magazine, where could they get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me at my email, which is czb2002 at windstream.net. Christy, it's time to get a Gmail account. I have one. <laughs> But it's even longer than that one. <laughs> I so I reluctantly. Okay, so we're, we'll make sure that we have that up on this post for people to get a hold of you. And I have a phone number. Oh, please! That I would. She's be, given her digits. I out. am giving my digits Look up out. because I really appreciate people calling me two one six five two six two seven two six. All of that information is in my publication on page three. Do you Excellent. know that my cell phone number is within two digits <gasps> of that phone number? Oh, really? Yeah. You're going to have That's some why I get your calls all yeah. the time. That's crazy. You're going to have some stalker trying to wow, figure that out. Wow, what a crazy. Now, Alex. So, That's crazy. Our crack research department, Christy, dug uh -oh. into your background. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you know she was a professional singer? And I don't even Is that true? I don't even is think that, that's on that's, the crack no. research. Come on, crack Come research on. department. I've got You're a that. professional singer. Is that true? I have sung Ugh. upon occasion. How professional are we talking about? Oh, I used to do weddings, and I would, you know, I, I studied for a long time. Is that right? I did. I did. I don't what do What kind of, like, jazz? What are we talking about? Um, do you sing jazz? Yeah. Oh, I guess. Yeah, Neil sing. Diamond was the jazz singer. Come on, Molly. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Nelly, now's the time to do that. <laughs> I. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. I, 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 I officially apologize for throwing Neil Diamond at Molly in response don't to be that a, question. Uh, don't diss I, I, Neil. I, no, I'm, I'm apologizing yes, legitimately. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm Molly. I apologize. Oh, the yeah. answer, Molly, is you yes, of you all can people sing should jazz. know all about Neil Diamond. I know. He's You're, a you, member of the you tribe. Said, yeah, you said that he's the. Moving on or moving here, you had to that like to everyone has to watch the jazz, the singer. jazz singer. That's right. Well, you got kicked out of the club. <laughs> that and Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, just as an aside, <laughs> young Lord. Jacob Gertzberg has been cast in the <gasps> Kenston production, the Kenston Middle School production of Fiddler on the Roof. And the irony of the whole thing is that all of Fiddler on the Roof has only one non-Jewish character in it. Jacob is like the only Jewish kid in his class, and he is that dude. <laughs> he's playing Fietka, the Russian, the Russian. Uh, oh, well, he's whatever. got some Russian yeah. in him. So. A little bit. Oh, anyway. The young guy that, yeah. that married the youngest daughter. Yes. That's who, that's who yeah, he's playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know your fiddler on the roof. Oh, back and forth. Mm, mm, um. Mm. We will have to promote young Jacob's yes. uh, appearance. Folks, you want to oh go check gosh. it out at KMS, when Kenston is it? Middle School. I think it's like end, uh, mid, uh, no, it's like early October. I think it is. Kenston Middle School. Go check it out. Google, yes, get Google your it. tickets now Good for folks, him. Because it's yeah. going to be a sellout. It is. Good for him. So you right. sang weddings and uh, yes, that kind of stuff. Yes, I did. I studied from the time I was a kid um, and through college and and I was in the theater. I started in the really? theater when I was favorite Broadway show five. <sighs> Greece. Oh, nice. Would uh, you be I, Sandy or Rizzo? Oh, Rizzo. Oh, okay. uh -huh. I, I, know, I can totally uh -huh. see that. Not right. even a question. I Who would you be, Molly? I'd be Rizzo. I could see that. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. a little attitude. With a little Sandy in me. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any Sandy. Just those hot pants. <laughs> Once she redoes herself. I would be Kanicki. I was going to oh, say, yeah. you were Kanicki. Yeah, just for that line, a hickey from Kanicki is like a Hallmark card when you care enough to give the very best. <laughs> you were Kanicki in your school, high school Back in the day. show. My wow. goodness. We digress, folks. Yeah, here. so what's the big question? Hold on a second. Hang on. Uh-oh. Oh. All right. Um, 
you sang and then you stopped singing professionally. Why did you stop singing professionally? Well, it wasn't like I was being hired to sing professionally outside of weddings and things of that nature. Okay. I, the truth of the matter is I thought I was going to graduate with a, a theater arts degree. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was going to end up on Broadway. And I didn't. And there wasn't an agent that came along and dragged me off to New York. So the truth of the matter is I came, I was in in Miami at the time. <laughs> and and Miami, I, Florida my Miami father, Ohio? I'm sorry. Miami, Florida or Miami of Ohio? Oh, no, Miami, Florida. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so my father s- suggested that I come home and get a job, <laughs> which I did. I think your dad and your husband are in cahoots. I was going to say, there's two instrumental men that Uh that really guided you into your careers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My father, was he was a thespian, and and he was a wonderful writer. But he also thought that I was flying far afield. (laughs) So So, what else did our crack research Well, it's interesting that we just talked about your dad, because our crack research department said... That Dick Zwilling, <laughs> Dick Zwilling, yeah, Dick Zwilling, uh, joined the Navy, chose to be a medic, not an officer, was a celebrated hero when his ship was sunk, spending three days and nights in the water, swimming men to safety, taking care of their wounds submerged, then chose to never speak of his heroism. That is correct. That's wow. crazy. That is correct. This is all World War Two, I assume? Yes. And wow. lived to be 101. No, lived, no, 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 no. My father would have been 101 uh, on his okay. last birthday. Okay, okay. No, he died very young. He, he now was, you're oh, fired. <laughs> only 63. I know exactly where that came oh, from because I remember writing 63? it. 63? Yes, he did. And why didn't he want to speak of it? He, he didn't feel he was a hero. He didn't want the recognition. There were a f- quite a few folks that were like that. Mm-hmm. Um, my, his brother-in-law was um, at Normandy four hours after the first group came in. Wow. And you never heard Uncle Hal talk about it. Um, his other brother-in-law lost a leg as a pilot. Um, that man never, ever said a word about his loss or that he struggled. Dad, it just wasn't honorable. Hmm. And I didn't even know um, how desperate the situation was until at, I was at his funeral and, and my uncle said, do you have any idea what he did? Wow. And um, now, interestingly enough, we when I was a kid, we watched... World War II movies together all the time. That was our thing, the two of us. I think what it is is it's um, that survivor syndrome. I think that people who um, see people see their friends get killed, a lot of them have a hard time talking about it because they feel guilty for surviving. Mm-hmm. It, it might very well be true. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little tidbit to this story. When um, Dad's ship went down, and I'm still researching what the heck ship he was on. I I don't have that information. Everyone's dead. But the bottom line was my grandmother sat straight up in the middle of the night and grabbed my grandfather and said, Dick is in the middle of the, the Atlantic, and his ship is burning, and he's in the water. Oh, my gosh. And my grandfather said, Bertha. Go back to bed. Stop it. Now, Hmm. she did, she was a visionary. She could see things, but he he did not acknowledge it. And sure enough, on the next morning, they were getting a telegram Hmm. that their son was missing in action and that his ship had gone down. Yep. Mm. Wow. Any more crack information? Yeah, Yeah, there's a ton here, but I think we hit the, we hit the high notes. Um, well, the the big thing though is that this magazine is just killing it, and you're doing a great job with it. And um, it is That's very uh, sweet. Oh, well, it's awesome! You. It's awesome. Um, and uh, 
Now, Christy George, it's time for the lightning round. Oh, my God. Are you ready God. for the lightning round? What? Yeah. It's a big deal. Uh-oh. Yeah, it hold is on. A big deal. Hold on. It's kind of scary. Molly, would you like to go first? I would love to, Alex. Thank you for asking no, me. Th- thank you, Molly. Yeah. So, Christy George, what's the last show you have binged? Mm. Maybe the Vikings? I don't know this Viking thing. <laughs> Alex probably knows. He knows is, everything. Uh, I think I started watching that. Uh, it's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh, and it's I, really violent, isn't it? It's pretty violent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's uh, it's like a good period piece. It really. All right. So question. lesson learned last week. It was kind of a big one. Oh, we love big ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, w- I wasn't even going there, but Christy laughed first. For, so. the, for the record, <laughs> Alex Gertzberg is shaking his head with disapproval. <laughs> oh, boy. Not to impose your values on others. Mm. It's a hard lesson wow. to learn. I, especially in this day and age. I keep having to learn it. Over and over again. My nose must be really big because I'm sure it changes. You know? Oh, I'm sure. My nose? No, <laughs> not your nose. But just the, oh. the the constant opportunity to be taught that lesson. Yes. Yes. You know, it it's probably just constantly comes to you. In, yes. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what's on your mind? Right this instant, Mm -hmm. John McCain. Oh, Oh. yes. John McCain is on my mind. The flags are half. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yes. Um, I I was a big fan of Mr. McCain's Mm -hmm. and um, considered him. And yes, he's on my mind. It's a great opportunity for our country to realize that there are nonpartisan. Yeah. There are people that can bring nonpartisans together and, and he was one and, and you if you read through any any posts on both sides, they right. all had a respect for him. Yeah. Yes. He's uh he's an amazing human for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And Did then, you know that he could oh, have sorry. um he could have gotten himself out of the POW camp and cho- yep. it, like easily without even having to do anything other than leave and he said, No, I'll I'll leave when my people leave. Yep. Mm. And, then, and then he's when my crew is yeah and then he stayed there for like another three years after that like mm. crazy yeah Mm-mm-mm. and how dearly he paid for that mm-hmm. decision mm-hmm. they thought that was foolish and just um treated him worse right then mm-hmm. it, it's unimaginable yeah yeah if you would grab your phone real quickly okay yes are we going to take pictures of each other? We are actually <laughs> afterwards, but what's the last text you sent and received? You don't have to say who it's from. You just read it. It's called Text Theater. Oh. Oh, I like that. So can can we turn things on now or no? Keep everything just the on? La- no. Just the last So the text. last, right. yeah. Yep. Okay. So oh, you really want me to read this? I, okay. I do. Yes. The better, the better. All right. Hi, sweetie. I'm doing a podcast tonight. It's called Best Podcast Ever. Thought you'd want to know. Probably be on Facebook in a couple of days. Was that to me? No, (laughs) it was to my son. I love that. And then the last one you received. The last text that I received was... 430 tomorrow question mark where should we meet question mark I'll be coming from Beechwood okay and that's what you received that's what I received okay mine was going into airplane mode aka podcast and size seven Betsy Johnson worn twice oh <gasps> I know what that is. <laughs> well, Jessica's selling these shoes if you're a size seven. <laughs> mm. Alex, what you got? The last one I received was um, Nellie yelling at me about something, and so I'm not going to read it. But oh, she's, come on, those were the. She's I angry. That was the 
Oh, those are the best. Uh, uh, no. She uh, can cut it out if she feels she needs to. Uh, um, she's the producer. No, because she's being snippy with me. Oh. <laughs> Nellie, for, I, I'm going to protect your anonymity here. Oh, uh, boy, at least, Nellie. At least the subject, uh, the content. And the last one I sent was me asking her to do something for which she yelled at me about a few <laughs> seconds later. <laughs> I love the sibling. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, Alex, what are your lightning round questions? Molly, oh. I'm so glad you asked. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Mm-hmm. Christy George. Just when you thought it was over. I oh, did we, think it was we're, over. We're barely getting started. <laughs> Um, now I'm going to need although according some, to our notes, some wine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to okay. want you're gonna want something stronger. Christy, you're on a desert island for a minimum of three months. You are allowed to bring with you any single musician's entire discography. Which musician do you choose? She's got it. Cream. Oh, Eric Clapton. Wow. You are a girl after my own heart. I love yeah. Cream. Oh, yeah. my wow. goodness. You guys couldn't watch. You couldn't binge together, though. I could, could binge listen. on Cream. I, I, Cream's I, amazing. I did binge on them are last you? night. So many comments. Oh, boy. So I am so sorry, Molly. Right I am so sorry. You guys are giving them to me. <laughs> Molly, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> How dare you? I'm trying to have a a, 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 a grown up conversation here, Molly. <laughs> oh my have you uh, listened to any of Eric Clapton's uh, stuff before that with like John Mayall and the oh, Blue yes. Breakers? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of old Eric Clapton. You yeah. know, um, did you know? Do you know how he got the name Slowhand? <laughs> Molly, can you, Molly, can you leave the room, please? <laughs> I think I do know, but you're going to have to tell me. So everyone thinks it's because of the methodical, slow way that he plays the blues. Not everyone. Well, <laughs> he grew up um, poor and his father was a painter, a house painter. And so when his dad said, I need you to come with me to help paint houses, he would take him. And Eric Clapton always painted super, super slow because he was very meticulous and he wanted to get it right. And he... Oh, um, that's good. I didn't always, know this. So what he would do, it was almost like the the Mr. Miyagi Karate Kid thing. Like he would go, his brush strokes were always re, like very slow, up and down, up and down. So that's how we get the name Slow Hand. Okay. Right? But later people would say that it was because of how he painted that he then um, – played the blues uh-huh. right well it was always slowly and methodically and you know intensely but not you know not fast frank you know but anyway that's slow hand i i will use that tidbit yeah i i didn't know that yeah well, I, you, I, might, I, you might want to fact check it but, i yeah. i will but you know, i i thought i definitely should i thought um, i knew it all about that yeah he's amazing so um same desert island, minimum of three months, and you can bring any single author's entire bibliography. Who do you bring? Um, that's really hard. Don't say such things around Molly. Please. Um, oh, yeah, right. Please. You guys have handed um, it to me. It might be Michener. Ooh, James Michener. Interesting. Or. That'll keep you busy. Yeah, um, until death. Forever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never have to get off the island. Um, and I loved, now, now I'm not going to be able to think of his name, the guy that did the um, all of the, oh, um, I want to say his name was Michael, it isn't, did the, um, all the CIA books. Tom Clancy. No, per, Prior Clancy. Um, Gosh, I, I, it's, I'm sorry. It's eluding it's me. okay. All right. We'll go with James We'll Mitchell. go with Michener. Okay. What is the habit or routine that you do every day that you've gotten the most mileage from? This is going to sound goofy. We the love goofier, goofy. the better. When I get up, <laughs> I jump. Tell us more. <laughs> we want to know every, from the minute the foot doesn't hit the ground, tell us. Well. 
How did it start? I believe that if you get everything going, your blood flowing, and, and your brain going, that that gets everything off and running. So there's a theory. Um, D- Dr. Michael Roizen is a believer in this, but I want you to know that I've been doing it for probably 25 or 30 years. I get out of bed and I start <laughs> to jump, and I usually do about 400 <gasps> jumps. Stop it. Every day? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Do you have a, um, do you know they make a trampoline? Or is this no, just on your it's hard No, it's not about a trampoline. Although it'd be easier on your head. So Probably is it like easier a dancing, on my hips. Like jumping no, around. No, no. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who yeah. can't see, she's just literally <laughs> bouncing her hand up and down. And sometimes on the I table. jump around the house. Like a bunny rabbit. Like a bunny rabbit. I right. can kind of see it because the, it, it it is the same benefit that one would get from exercising or even just stretching, moving your body around, but intensely in that way. Yeah. I could see how it wakes you up yes. and, and it gets the um, uh, cardiovascular system going. And so I, Do you ever have guests at your house <laughs> that you might need to like tell them about this little habit? And can, and can you videotape it next time? <laughs> a lot of people have seen this vision. Oh, my. But the first time my husband oh saw it, oh, my gosh. It was hysterical. <laughs> he came downstairs. We hadn't been together very long. And he, he just stood there and stared at me and said, What are you doing? I said, I'm jumping. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm jumping. Oh, my Why? gosh. Why? So it's good for you. I mean, he just <laughs> turned around and walked away. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think that you could get an annulment. I think he could have gotten an annulment from that marriage. That's oh, cool. my great. Okay. Uh, well, I might try it. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see if that um, happens tomorrow morning. That may also be the answer to the next question. <laughs> and the, 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 final, the final lightning <laughs> round this question. This is the big one. Uh-oh. What is an embarrassing thing about yourself that no one else knows? <laughs> oh, no, that's not it. Oh, that's excellent. not even close. Oh, that's nice. Oh, fantastic. Let's nice. Oh, golly. So many to I have, choose there's from. There's so many things I have done that have been horribly embarrassing. We got all day. Mm. Um. All right. This is probably <laughs> this is probably the worst. All right. Now I could, and it want. could have been fatal. I just it could have oh, could no. have been a tragedy. This, so this was many many moons ago when platform shoes were really in, and I mean platform shoes. Right. So we're talking seventy, like high heel platform shoes. And I had been to a church to, for to a wedding. And it was a big Catholic church, and it lots and lots and lots of stairs. And I was alone because I think I was recently <laughs> divorced. Uh, okay. Yeah. Story's getting better. Yeah. And so I was at the church, at the wedding, came out of the church, and my heel got caught at on the top step. And I sailed, truly oh my sailed off the step. This is the craziest thing ever. And there was a woman who was a good-sized woman at the bottom of the, the stairs. And I fell on her. <laughs> she broke your fall. <laughs> she saved your life. She saved my life. <laughs> Did she, was she injured? She was not injured, but she was not happy with me. <laughs> and I was not happy with me because, of course, I had a yellow dress on. I lived in Florida at the time. And it was ripped up. And my shoes were all dangling. And I didn't look very great. <laughs> I looked great when I went in. And I was so embarrassed that I couldn't go to the reception. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And did you know the woman? No. No. No, and, oh. and I never had to see her again. Oh, my gosh. If you're listening out there and someone <laughs> fell on you in the 70s, <laughs> please 
Please get, well, she already gave her number. Give her, give Christy a call. You, you may end up on the cover of Neighbors magazine, or give Alex a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one of the. Is worst. there a statute to limitations on that, Alex? Yeah, it's pretty early on. Oh, that is fun. <clears throat> that is fun. Well, this has been so much fun. Lovely. This has it's, been fun. It's so much. fun. Did you have fun, Christy George? I had fun. Oh, good. Good. It's good. not scary. No, no, it's no. Fun. I wasn't sure where it was going to go, but it's... we're never sure either. Right. <laughs> we let the people take it to where it's going to go. Folks, you want to go to uh, you want you want to read your your neighbor's magazine as soon as possible. If you live in Chagrin Falls, South Russell, Bainbridge, or Bentleyville, you're already getting it. When will the... people get it in September? For like the September, I just put my um, to put it to bed. My September issue to bed. Um, Saturday we hit the magic button, so it will be out around the eighth or the ninth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, advertisers advertise there. Mm-hmm. If you have story ideas, should they send them to you? Absolutely. Good. I I prefer to get to know everyone. I get to know all of the cover folks. I usually go to their house before we even do that. You should have a party. I you know that. That's a very good idea, and a that's one year on party. the mm-hmm. list. Well, it's, it's, over it's a year. Well, two years. Two year I'm party. I'm past my two year anniversary. Yeah. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Happy anniversary. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's yes. big time. Yeah. Um, if you are in Cleveland and you're a business owner and you're in Cleveland on September 20th, Christy, you should you should do this. This is important, right? Uh, the Cleveland Metropolitan Bar Association, the CMBA, is doing a talk where I will be speaking on the topic of how to stay out of court, right? How to stay out of court. So I'm going to be going through my um, process for self-auditing your company and uh, eliminating the things or fixing the things that are most likely to get you sued. Hmm. Um, And then... And it's going to be a lunch and learn. It's at the at the CMBA offices downtown. And then after I'm done talking, we're going to have a panel discussion with an in-house counsel from Sherwin Williams, an employment lawyer, uh, and me. And this, that's going to be moderated by Becky McMahon, a former podcast guest and current uh, executive director of the CMBA, uh, on best practices for staying out of court. So that is uh, a not to be missed event Sounds on September like 20th. It. Yeah, Cafe Sausalito is providing lunch. Ooh, wow. um, I yeah, so heard that'll that be. Name in a while. I know, right? Uh, it's good food, though. Real good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so go there. And uh, if you have listened this far, then you really like us. You really, really like us, right, Molly? Yeah. So, why don't you like us on Facebook and. Uh, or you can subscribe by clicking on subscribe at thebestpodcastever.com, yes. where you can also get the other 56 episodes before this one sure. uh, and glean from the world's greatest thinkers, at least those that are in this neighborhood, um, the things yes, that make do them Do all great. that. And Christy, where could they find you if they're interested? Other than your email, do you have a website? I do not have a website. Okay. So just email Christy, call Christy, um, and support Neighbors Magazine. Thanks, folks. Thank Thanks, Christy. You. That was Thank awesome. Thank you, Christy.